So Carol, did did I hear you say that your uh, your foot thing is still comfortable? Yes. Yeah. How interesting. Uh, and you, I think you said you've been dealing with that with like for like three years or something. Oh, or more than that. No, long, since that? long, long time. Wow. Since twenty, since my twenties. And, and again, sixty one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we we have the discussion. Oh, Eric's here. Perfect timing. He'll pop in any second. There he yes. is. Hello, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we have Novella here from last year's uh, medical class. Remember, Novella? Hi, Eric. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. We've been discussing um, today's uh, main topic is uh, hypnosis for health. Oh, awesome. and healing and and working with healthcare professionals, which is right up our alley, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. And uh, the what we just finished doing was we I was getting feedback from Carol because about a week ago in an online training I did the pain demo with her, objectifying pain, mm -hmm. and uh, she was uh, I was checking back in because the next day in class it was still taken care of it was still gone and today I said let's check almost a week later and or it is a week later I guess and she said she tell it tell Eric how you doing yeah it's still it's still gone I still have uh you know I mean I can feel that there's that there's still like that place in my foot that feels strange but it doesn't hurt anymore wow. so that's and great I'm, something with her daughter I'm Yes, yeah. and, and I did the same thing with my daughter, who also has foot issues, um, yesterday. Now, I haven't spoken to her again today. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty interesting because Patty had done it on the computer. Um, but she explained to me that what she does um, after she has you identify the pain and, and, you know, visualize what it looks like to you, then she holds her hand up about, I don't know, I went about maybe four feet, five feet away from her. Oh. And I held my hand up and I said, okay, put it in my hand. And now what does it look like? And when she first started, it was a um, metal ball with flames coming out of it, a silver metal ball. And when she put it in my hand, it was still silver, but there were no flames. Oh. And then we took it and we threw it up into the unit, up into the atmosphere. We just threw it up into space. And then it got cold. And then her foot got cold and it didn't hurt at all. That is very cool. Isn't that cool? So, That's like cool. I said, I haven't spoken to her today, but I just know it stayed that way because it did for me too. So, yeah. And just to reiterate, at the end of that, you know, what we always want to do, and we had that discussion, I know that day because I watched the mm -hmm. video and I actually made a video out of it and I cut a bunch of other stuff off that uh, and put it out there. But um, the the thing that it that you want to make sure of is that the signal if if something changes or needs your attention and I did I did that what yeah, you said yeah. I said it'll That's, never bother you again unless something changes right. that needs you to pay attention to it right yeah I just wanted to reiterate that because yeah. that is important because it is a signal and here's right. the thing I actually in reality I have enough faith in the person's unconscious that I'm I'm pretty sure it would do that anyway. <laughs> Right. But just just for ethical reasons and for practical reasons, we want to always add that at the end of the session. Yeah, mm -hmm. because, you know, just so that they will recognize, you know, it might get a little colder or warmer or might might vibrate a little more or something. It'll give you some some uh, indicator that it might need your attention that doesn't have to be discomfort. Right. It can be something some other way that it lets you know it might just be a thought jumps in your head. You know, who knows? I don't really care long, you know, but it's nice to throw that in at the end because then, then you, again, you've covered that. And they, and they, I think it helps also to, for the client to feel, to feel confident that, you know, that I'm not going to re injure this just because I don't feel the pain anymore. Right. Right. Or something. So it's a nice confirmation for the client as well. So, so Eric, uh, we're going to be doing some things later on, uh, having them practice that we, Hopefully, you're going to have time to do one round, at least, of the library technique, finally. Oh, that's cool. And we're going to apply it to, hopefully, some kind of a health issue, perhaps, mm -hmm. since that's the, the topic today. So, as far as um, working with health professionals, how long do we have you here today, Eric? A uh, little before noon. 
Oh, okay, so almost an hour or yeah. around close to an hour. Okay, so I don't want to take time with this next thing. I was going to do a screen share. I'd rather uh, take the time with uh, with you contributing some things. If you did, you bring anything specific, or would you like to just have I'll discussion? Just, about? Yeah. Does anyone have a question for Eric? Not particularly. Everybody's in trance, I think, already. Yeah, well, I, we're, I we're, we're, we're been listening question. to you. Carol's got a question. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. I want to know if it, what you can do with arthritis, you know, generalized arthritis. Well, um, with it can be a help to first understand how someone is experiencing it. So what, what kinds of uh, thematic concerns, how would their body show them that they're having arthritis? Well, you know, the joints ache. Mm -hmm. okay, particularly my, when the weather system comes through, like the dampness and all, I can feel it before it gets here. Mm -hmm. so that's where I could use some help. So it's almost like, it's kind of like a barometer. Because <laughs> your, your arthritis is telling you the weather. Yep. That's true. Wow. Well, and, and I'm wondering, I'm, so if you, if you were to look at what would, you, what would you like to get out of using hypnosis with your experience of arthritis? I would like to have the joints in my hand shrink a little bit so that my hands don't have the knobby kind of feeling. I can show you. You see, see, see that oh, okay. arthritis. Mm -hmm. So if I could just get them smaller and smoother rather than knobby. <clears throat> I didn't mean to get you involved in this right now. I was just no, no. So what, what I'm hearing is um, you'd like it to get less knobby and you'd like it to shrink. Yes. Okay, and what would that, um, how would you like it to look? Um, I would like it to look like it did when I was 45. <laughs> when my okay. hands were uh, slender and soft and beautiful. Now I can perceive my hands as beautiful anyway. Okay. But, uh, they would have to, it would have to shrink some in order for me to um, be less aware of the unattractiveness, what I call unattractive. So I'm hearing you say you'd like to see your hands differently. Yep. Okay. And you'd like them to be smoother and to shrink, less knobby. You'd also like them to almost do some time travel. You'd like them to be that. more like when you were 45. That. Yes. Okay. And, and all the things that you've mentioned um, have to do with how you feel about your hands, but also what they look like to you. Right. Okay. How would it feel different? How would it feel differently? Uh, I wouldn't notice them. Okay. So if you if you didn't notice them, what would you be noticing? Uh, a sense of wholeness and just being um, grounded and centered, as we have mentioned. So. Um, let me open it. it. I appreciate what you're sharing. I know that's very Thank personal you. for you. And, it is. And, and it, um, let me, let me ask, um, uh, Sean and Carol, well, okay. if you think of, if I could just for a moment, if it's all right, Novella, sure. um, Sean and Carol, what, how do you, how do you hear, um, uh, Novella experiencing her hands and what is, she, what is it she's looking for? Mm. 
Yeah, go, Sean? Go, go if you got it. Um, it's noticing that, yes, there's pain there, but at the same time, the, the look of the hands are denoting, this is just a perception of, they're, they're not a representative of who she feels internally. So the external wants to match the internal and there's inflammation there, which makes them difficult to feel. But at the same time, if you don't notice them, that means it's a part of you and it's not something that stands out in a negative way. Yes, very good. Mm. And I was kind of thinking um, on a similar um, level in that um, when, we're, when we're young, I think we don't think about um, we don't think about things like that. We don't look at our hands and say, um, oh, I don't like this or, or whatever, because they're just part of us. And I think as we get older and things start to hurt us, then we look more. And then when things start to change in a way that we don't like, and now we've noticed them more because they hurt us on top of that, we start to not, um, maybe start to not feel like we like that part anymore. Like now this is a part that I don't like and I still have it and I want it to be like it was. Right. You know, and I think as a woman, maybe that's a little different than a guy because there's a lot more um, society pressure to look like we looked when we were younger. And so yeah. that goes right along with all of that to not feel like you want to feel about yourself. Right. I really like that. And Novella, what is it that Carol said and what Sean said that you, that looks to you like how you're feeling? Well, they both tapped into something that was a piece of it. I liked what you said about the internal and the external, Sean. And then I liked what Carol was saying about the age-related part of it. Mm -hmm. And so what was coming to me at that moment after you finished, Carol, finished talking, I was thinking, well, I could put a psychic shield between me and that perception of the um, unattractiveness. In other words, I can't change particularly how my hands look but I can change how I think about how my hands look. So I could say they are a part of me, they're my beautiful hands, they have done good work and they are useful and uh, productive. I can write, I can type, many. I can cook, I can do many, many things. In other words, shift it over to the positive is what, what I would think. But I hadn't done that until we talked about it. So wow. thank you all. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Called conversational hypnosis, I think. Yes. Yeah. And and if and and I appreciate you taking the courage to share that because that's very personal. Yes, and, it is. And Absolutely. and what you what you just shared, and that's what when we're dealing with health issues, what we're trying to expose, which we just did, is very respectfully to help someone discover the meaning of what their health issue is about and, and there's there's no way for i mean we can have some general templates that today you helped us understand that it's possible someone might see their 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 medical issue as something that um has feelings of making them feel older making them feel not as purposeful not feeling as useful it could also be a sense of not being as attractive that can also fit with not feeling worthy. And so you can see there, there's meaning here in the, yes. what you shared today. And at the same yes. time, because you're also, you're thinking with two caps, you're thinking with the personal experience of what it means to live with arthritis, but uh -huh. you also as a hypnotherapist, yes, you came up with a way to change your meaning. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Yes, yes, that you so shifted, cool. and how cool is that? Thank you. And you know, what you said about the worthiness, uh, it affected my self-esteem. 
mm -hmm. before. And if I think if our self-esteem is affected one iota, it's so easy to slip back down and mm -hmm. like a thermometer and just drop it down or like a barometer and let it go down. So even though uh, I may have a drop in my self-esteem, it doesn't have to stay there. I can move it up by thinking about my own worthiness, even though there are these pains of these perceptions. Beautiful. And, I, and so I'm hearing at a, at a very deep core level, you feeling better about you helps you to experience the arthritis in a way that could shrink those feelings. Wow. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> yes. So it's, see, I think the, the trap, there's a trap that when we're hearing someone's meaning, their story, then we might latch on to the wrong thing unless we take the time to explore. Well, what does that really mean? So if you notice, I've been paying attention, it's a little bit of NLP stuff that I love hearing Patty talk about. What is the language of the meaning of your health issue? And you started off by talking about the shrinking, which is kind of kinesthetic. It also can be visual because we think of it as being less. But as you talk more about it, your language was very visual. It was about what it looked like to you. And then when we took open the veil behind that, what we were looking at is that the, the other meaning of this is that it made you feel less than. It sure did. Yes. And so you know what, what I really nice, love. I'm hmm. sorry, go ahead, Doctor. Go ahead. No. You know what ahead. I really loved? What I really loved was at the end of all of this, you said all of the things that you appreciated about your hands. And so you took what started off as really negative, you know, about th they hurt and you don't like the way they look and so on, which is which is true for you. But you flipped that and you started talking about all the things that your hands do that are good, that you love. And it was like, wow, that's really cool. You can do that for yourself. That was just, that was profound for me. That was really oh, profound. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for that feedback. You're welcome. Well, and it's interesting. You started off by how it looked. And you move to how it feels emotionally for you. Mm -hmm. Very true. And then the pivot, think of it as a pivot. Yeah. The hypnotic pivot was, I could feel differently because my hands can work for me. They could still do something for mm -hmm. me. Right. And that was the, I love that. I just came up with that. A hypnotic pivot. You basically <laughs> shifted the meaning of what you've been experiencing that really contributes to you not feeling good about it. Right. Very good. Now, and, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to mention because you you made a, a very good observation <laughs> in the fact that Novella is a hypnotherapist and through just t these, this talking and really doing on a more conversational level, what we would do with a client who isn't a hypnotherapist would would perhaps require deeper levels. And yet she was able to, we were opening up possibilities and her mind was taking it in the direction it needed to go by asking the right questions. And by getting to that deeper meaning, all of a sudden what was accomplished and what I was thinking while I was watching this, it was really very fascinating to watch as this unfolded. And again, because Novella is a hypnotherapist and she took, she took it in a realm where maybe a client in front of you might not have been able to quite get there. And I'm thinking what, what I was hearing from Carol and from Sean and then when Novella was interpreting from, if you were thinking of that as like a pre-talk, that then uh, even Carol was mentioning things like, like that part of her. And I think Novella even mentioned, and I was thinking parts therapy for parts integration for, a, for someone who's not a hypnotist could have come up with some of those same resolutions and that same reframing of the hands and appreciation of herself and how valuable her hands still are and that that, that might have been able to be a parts integration session with a client 
to come to those conclusions. So that might be one of the one of the methods which we're going to do next weekend. Um, one of the things that you could use with a client to to help them to get to what she so uh, gracefully did simply by listening to the feedback. Wow. Interesting to watch. I'm great. just blown away by all this. This is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you look 10 years younger already. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm also less lonely because I'm with the group today. Oh, sweet. Oh, well, yeah. You can join us anytime, you know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Eric, Don? do you ask, as someone's going through this, the supporting pieces that maybe they've used for arthritis or that they want to introduce me <coughs> from like a holistic level or what may have caused the arthritis to go deeper in the pre-talk to figure those things that could actually help more as the therapy is going along with it? Well, it, it's, it's interesting if we're taking time to hear the meaning that somebody has about what they're experiencing then, and we're also paying attention to their language, we could, add, uh, because I really think the narrative we create about things is what we get the, the meaning from. In other words, we all, uh, I think we're all meaning makers, and we're all storytellers, and so we're storytelling in our own perception of things, and novella, you know, very um, sensitively talked about going back when she was 45 and what her hands felt and looked like. And so it could be, well, tell me about what it, what has the journey been like for you with discovering that you've had this? And tell me how you first learned about it and how did, uh, how did you manage it? And what you what I'm really paying attention to is the narrative the meaning of how did she come to experience it. In some regards, what I'm, I've heard Novella you talk about today is that having this medical issue took something away. Right. And what you right. came to as a hypnotherapist is what is it that you haven't lost? In other words, what you're doing is finding something that still is there. And some of that is the meaning like you came up with, that your hands still have meaning. Yes. And the meaning, and the meaning changes for all of us. We, I think what happens for all of us is that we have this internal comparison. The comparison is who we were. <laughs> and yet, isn't it interesting? We all have this consistency of who I was and who I am. And yet, it's the shift that creates that sense of loss. I think we also deal with something called it's called grieving the healthy self. Wow. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And so when we grieve our healthy self, how is it that we assign that label that says it's all or none? If you know, in our in our subconscious mind, isn't it interesting? I'm Sundays, um, I always buy one lotto ticket. And the reason is because <laughs> it's not probability, it's divine intervention. Okay. And so and it's funny, but when you, if you think about, okay, you have the winning ticket. You don't think about, well, let's see now. I think I'm going to get $721.52. And, and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take, I'm only going to get so much in taxes. So I'm going to divide that by this and that. No, we go, $10 million? Oh, my God. And the, the reason I'm illustrating this is because see, our subconscious mind is limitless. It's kind of like Patty with limitless possibilities, unlimited possibilities. Unlimited. See, our yeah. subconscious mind has no limits. So we also, I think, think in these terms in all or none. That's, it's funny because a lot of people will say, I'll only play the lottery when it gets to 178 million. I'm like, so 10 million wouldn't help you and the odds are worse when it gets higher. So it doesn't make sense. And the thing that I find interesting about all this being that I've been in health and wellness for a while, I've had clients take chemotherapy for rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm like, how did you get to that conclusion that you were gonna take chemotherapy drugs for an inflammatory disease? And it's because they're so desperate that they're looking for someone to tell them what to do instead of figuring out themselves. And they don't wanna second guess an expert 
So they'll put their entire system at jeopardy just to get rid of the pain because it's so bad. It's very sad. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, I'm uh, very conscious of um, the difference in alternative medicine or supporting myself with uh, particular vitamins or supplements rather than letting the doctor just dictate what is best for me. I don't do that. So um, I went to the rheumatologist the other day, first time in six months. And uh, when I left, he says, well, what can I do for you? What can, how can I help you? I can write you a script for so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you could give me a refill on the cortisone. But that was all because I told him that I'm, I know how to do nutrition. I take supplements. I told him what I, other things that I did. And uh, I thought, boy, he thinks he must project him what he must think, that I think I know everything. But of course, if you study your own illness, if you study your symptoms and you apply your knowledge to what's available, which is what we do with hypnosis, what's available to me to help this client. And Dr. Rosen, you have, I'm wondering what words to use to tell you the global concept that you are putting out there with that last summary statement, because that's what I kind of listen for. How are we, where are we going to go with this? And uh, what's the object of this objective? And that you've helped me a lot. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks. I, I was thinking uh, as we talk about that, I mean, what we did today really was a pre-talk. You can see the pre-talk is trance work. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it also is creating meaning for the hypnotherapist to help discover what, what novella your meaning was. I like that. And so now if we're thinking of the actual trance work, um, it really depends on what you feel may help the person based on, you know, what they're telling them about you. And it also, I mean, today what I heard novella in, in, in your very, um, sensitive and courageous sharing was that uh, the meaning is the story you tell yourself. And when we change our story, yes. we change the meaning and the meaning then changes how we feel about it. It sure does. And so one idea, I mean, I love Patty mentioned if we're going to think, okay, what techniques could work here? We could do heart therapy which could be very powerful. We could do the library technique where we're basically finding books that capture, first of all, and as we get into that, the, the, the meaning of what is uncomfortable about this and coming up with a title and then in the positives, finding the book, the story of how you want to feel about this. I mean, if we're using an Ericksonian kind of technique, we could actually tell a story in trance. So you could do the, in a long, long time ago, there was a young woman, Novella. And then it could be, and she lived in a small, beautiful place where there was a large mirror. And many people know the fairy tales about mirrors and how we can look at ourselves and see so many things. So you see, we start to paint a, a story that then might we come up with some metaphors. That's the other thing about trance work. Metaphors are powerful because metaphors allow us to create the meaning of what it is, how we want to experience something. So if you take that as a theme, Let's brainstorm for a minute. What kind of story might you tell in a trance? It sounds like a fairy tale that involves a mirror where the end product is shrinking some of those uncomfortable feelings. And then we're going to use the language that Novella had. So it starts to resonate back into the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, you've mentioned the knobbiness, the, the, um, the, the feeling of, of it looking uncomfortable. 
and unattractive. And so what happens if we create a story where novella in the story, and we don't have to say there was a young girl named novella. Right. The technique in hypnosis can be, right. if we just pair those two together, I, I love this as a technique, even in the induction work, uh, where you can say, and there was a young girl, novella. And the person who hears their name being called will associate the two because we're not saying and the girl's name is um and then what we do is we move the character novella through the process of where what's the outcome the outcome well let me ask you guys if we did do a little bit of a story and we use metaphor what comes to mind for you where would you want to have novella go in the story that creates a different meaning in how she's looking at herself. Well, there's a, a famous myth uh, about, um, it's a long one, so I don't want to take up your time with it. If yeah. you want to know it, I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing. But sure. I could see myself going to a well of very invigorating water and dipping my hands into that water holding them there and then pulling them out and they just look so clean and fresh and just like they were when I was younger mm. I have to translate that I'll so, that's a great story if you've never heard that myth it's a good fairy tale hmm. well and you know I love what you just did what happens if we don't make up the story we have them tell us the story Mm -hmm. Very true. That's a great idea. So then you say, "Is have you ever come across when we're, you know, for many of us, we may have heard some story, some fairy tale, some something from when we were younger. Notice the transfer. That can we can then use right now to help us to feel differently. And in that difference, possibly noticing less and noticing more. And so, and then if you were to tell that story, which would have been, well, I, I remember the story of going to the well and putting my hands in the water. And when I took them out, they looked this way. They felt that way. It's like, wow. So this is interesting because I think when we tell a story, we go into trance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. yep. So the possibility <laughs> of having them tell the story and how cool that if somebody has that ability to create those kinds of, of um, that kind of imagery, whether it's visual for them or kinesthetic. I mean, parts of your 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 story novella is also doing something. Isn't it interesting? You talk about putting your hands into something. That's, that's a great. great. That's a great metaphor. Uh, putting your hands into something. That's right. And finding something beautiful comes out of it. True. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Eric, Eric, you've got something blocking part of your camera on the left side of your camera. There's a big black street down. Is there something in front of your camera there? Other side. Um, it would be your left. Oh, yeah. It's, what is that? It's your camera. Your camera. Oh, it looks goodness. like something's in front of it. How's there that? we go. Thank Hello. Hey, it must have moved. I was afraid it was going to start covering you up. It looked like it was growing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, to interrupt. No, thanks. But, you know, that's interesting that we could make use of somebody's story. And then so then are you coming. suggesting you would have them tell their story to well, you? Well, it, it could be. And then if they're, we could then do the trans work with their story and take parts of what, you know, that idea of the well and putting mm -hmm. your hands into the water and somehow, and again, the imagery and the embedded, embedded commands that we make you. So it's the hypnotic language that we're applying to this. Interesting. Of them being able to reach in and when their hands came out, might they notice things they didn't notice? I mean, actually, I love that the confusion technique around this where what you could do is you could have, and isn't it wonderful not to notice what you can notice, what you didn't notice that you can notice and also not have to. And 
it's how boom, boom, boom. It's like it can yeah. really put you into kind of like a what? <laughs> but I think, uh, again, some of that meaning um, that the person is telling us is we can either give it to them, but we can also use that kind of vague confusion technique so they will cr assign the meaning to the mm -hmm. story of how it's they their would meaning. like to explain right. it's their meaning. Yeah. Interesting. And then we could also throw in a technique where we're doing future pacing. And what we're doing then is saying, and in the same, you know, because it's interesting that we go back when we're trying to remember things that felt different. I think the thing in hypnosis is you can go forward to create the expectation of how you want to feel different. Mm -hmm. And if what, and since you were doing a pool, you know, a well, well, water has a beautiful theme to it because it not only reflects, but it also carries us. Mm -hmm. So you could use, I like the notion in future pacing to, it is, I'm cautious about it just to make sure if someone, you know, mentions, well, oh, I hate swimming. You know, then I, I'd be cautious about using that. But I've used the notion of drifting into a river of time. And as you take your next breath, might you drift forward five seconds, ten minutes, two hours, six months, six months drifting forward peacefully, soothingly, safely to that future you. And as you peer through that river of time and see yourself and notice the things you want to notice that give you confidence, confidence, a sense of being all of who you are. And might you notice that they have their hand on the pulse of time and being able to do what you can do and take pride in that. And as I count from three down to one, might you drift into that future self peacefully, comfortably, confidently, three, drifting deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, two, going further and further. And on one, might you experience all that future learning? One, feel that sense of who you want to be and, and just embellish it. Let them really discover. And then I like to throw in things. And with your next breath, notice that beginning smile, that sense of how you can feel good about yourself. And we all can be a little stubborn about that smile. And I will tell you, people in the trance will go. <laughs> and, then, and then I like to throw in and take that deep, soothing breath. Now, now, if you've also done anchors, you can have their thumb and index finger come together at the same time in this future self, because what you're going to do then is if you bring them back into the river of time to come back to your present self, and as they come into themselves, have their finger and index finger come together now, come together now, soothingly, smartly, competently, now, and boom, now it's like take that deep breath. Feel all of that future positiveness. And, and then what you can do is you can throw in things of association. And when you see the color blue, <laughs> might you feel this sensation growing, glowing, a deepening, profound endeavor of metaphysical change on a level unprofoundly experienced and yet now. So, boom. What you can do is play with these techniques as you put them together so that what we're really doing is we're creating an indelible snapshot of what the meaning is you want them to take. So when you see the color blue, might you notice that deepening feeling of comfort and calm, a glowing, growing, profound endeavor of change now. So these are things that they can experience as they're in the trance that they're bringing back that's kind of transforming their, their narrative is what we're doing. You, I love your, your I love your dialogue and the way how you're saying these things. I wish I could remember all these <laughs> associations that you're using now. Well, this is being recorded, so you oh. know you can maybe go back and watch it again. Hey, okay, I write everything okay. down. 
So the cadence, Eric, when you're going at that pace, is you're bringing her up and bringing her up with the cadence and the tone, it seems like. I'll be back. Is that, is that what we're trying to really establish is the positive and the more energetic way in which your tone is being involved in that too? Yeah, you know, that's interesting. I, I think I'm, I'm trying to bring some more energy to it, especially at points of transition. So okay. if she is, um, when I'm bringing someone out, I know I probably speed up my voice. And I'm, uh, because I also am aware, um, and we have a sense when somebody is in trance, are they, uh, th there's that fine line between going into a very, very deep trance where um, somebody is almost asleep, but they're not. And, and it's interesting when you make use of some of these different techniques for anchors and so forth and take that deep breath and stuff. It's fascinating to me if they'll do it. And they, and, and it's interesting when they come out and you do the, um, debriefing, if you will, at the end to ensure that they are also in an alert state. And you say, well, what was that like for you? And some people say, you know, I heard your voice. It came in and out. And I, and it, and, and I say, well, what do you remember of it? And some people say, I don't remember anything. <laughs> you know, like, wow. They've, they've been in a very, very deep trance. But I'm also mindful of wanting them to get more alert and oriented. Um, in fact, Bruce Eimer wrote a paper that is, it, it is actually, it's, I reference this because I think it's also, um, it could be a liability issue. So I, I always emphasize this. When you bring somebody out of trance, and Patty does this, she emphasizes this, you really need to ensure that they are alert, you know? And so, um, and with, before they leave your office, Right. And, and that is a responsibility on our part. And, and we do that with subtleties like, you know, do you smell popcorn? <laughs> you know, or, um, well, tell me, you know, and, and sometimes it's a shift. So what are you going to do after this? Where are you going? And what plans do you have for tonight? You know, and so, and it can be what we're doing is getting them back reoriented and out of their, you know, out of the trance that they've been in. Patty has a wonderful expression. We live in trance anyway, so we're just changing trances. <laughs> uh, actually, I think it was Milton Erickson that first said that everybody's already in trance. We just gotta, <laughs> just gotta oh, give my. them a better, we gotta teach them a better trance. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was very interesting. Cool. We haven't, uh, in class, we hadn't gotten into the official metaphor uh, thing yet either, which is we do a little uh, exercise <laughs> where people do. Uh, think about different aspects of, of a certain issue and create an image, you know, draw a picture of it on a, on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And it's a great exercise, but I can see where this could be something you could do with a client, you know, have them talk about, uh, you know, their issue and just like objectifying pain, how does that come to you? What do you, what do you, mm -hmm. what kind of an image could represent that challenge or whatever it is right and come up with a metaphor mm -hmm. and then say and what what obstacles do you perceive you know there are to you reaching the goal that we set you know and how do you how do you uh, imagine that that obstacle does that, that have looks... you think of a representation for the obstacle you know might be a mountain or it might be a you know there's these this is what our mind does with ideas anyway it comes up with representations and i could see where we could create eric you may have just started a whole new a whole new exercise for these classes. I can see where, and for especially for the health issues, you might put it in the medical hypnosis uh, segment, um, where you have the person with those questions because you're getting that information. And if you get them to go ahead and create their own metaphor for how is that represented in your consciousness, well, I see that as this, or I, I, this feels like that. And we can create the story based on their metaphors and create a whole hypnotic process then, like you said, telling a story, you know, Ericksonian style, and incorporating their impression of all those metaphors. And uh, it's, it's real close to the exercise we've been doing, but I think it takes it to a, another level, to a, to a it's, higher level. It's interesting being someone who, who has just done that recently myself, it makes it much more, um, much more real 
when you assign, like when I assigned what my pain looked like to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It made it much more real to absolutely. me than something somebody else makes up. So that's, that's really yeah. great. I mean, I think that would work amazingly when it comes well, to things like that. Because that, that makes is it personal. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, when we were doing that, you know, as much as possible, I, you know, we want the client, it's much more powerful for the client if you allow them to come up with the answer or the direction or the, or the object, you know, because it's their mm -hmm. meaning, like Eric said, it's their meaning. So they have the metaphor. And if we can encourage them to, uh, to for it to surface enough that we can detect what the metaphors are. And she was doing the, the smoothing. I was thinking about those sands mm -hmm. of uh, that one script that we, you guys practiced a few weeks ago, smoothing out the sands, you know, the sand dunes, mm -hmm. getting smoother. You could do a, a process like that with, with um, something like what uh, Novella is talking about too, right? Mm -hmm. You know, smoothing it out. There's all, they're all metaphors anyway. So I can, I can see a whole, a whole new exercise being formed here. Well, right? Actually, I have a, we'll have to hook up. I'll text you tomorrow. I think this is something we could present at IAC. Oh, the we, better, we better do this quick then. We only got till the end of, we right. only got till September 1st. <laughs> I, I will text you tomorrow because I have some ideas on this. I think well, we, can add it to the, we can add it to the medical training. I think it would be a great yeah. piece for health, health issues. Which is why I'm glad it came out here because yeah. it's powerful. The metaphors for most health issues, uh, uh, metaphors are generally what, what most people recommend to use because it takes you out of that physical experience that you've been having with that issue. And, and they really just work like magic with, with health issues. So this is a perfect place for it, I think. Yeah. And so. thank you, Novella, for bringing it up. And yes, for Sean sharing. And Carol, your for ideas sharing. are great. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you very it much. Was, it was kind of like a group hypnosis session for Novella. It was kind of cool. Mm. You know? It was. Yeah, and, and, the, and the best part of it to me is that she came up with her own, you know, you all were, that's that exactly cool. what I was talking about earlier that I, that is my goal for teaching is that you open up possibilities for the client and then they come up with their own solutions. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what just happened here. Yes, yeah, like asking that. questions, opening doors and windows, presenting possibilities, and then she just her mind started putting it all together. And yes, thought, what a beautiful, what a beautiful thing to well. Please prepare. let me tell you the basis of that fairy tale, because I think it would everybody would could benefit from it. It's the story of a woman whose father sold her to the devil, ah. and in order to get free of him, she had to cut off her arms or had to have her arms cut off so she had no arms but the queen the king fell in love with her and she married the king and had a baby and the devil came along and dropped her baby into the well so <coughs> he took her arm her no arms arms and plunged into the well to pick up the baby and her arms were restored so she had her arms yeah. back Oh. So to me, that is the gift of your own creativity, that you can pick up mm -hmm. your own creativity and it restores us. That's the way I look at that. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for letting me tell that. You're welcome. That was, that's a beautiful story. Yes. <clears throat> the power of love. Yes. Mm -hmm.